Good evening. Welcome to ILFL Soccer Night on the bank holiday weekend, the final week of March. Um, as we roll down the season and things come to an end, um, we want to know how they ended. We've got a few champions that, um, in fact, we've got all the division champions sorted out in our open age football. But uh, there was a few other league positions, plus a bit of pride and a bit of uh, footballing banter and the, the usual town hamlet's habits of nana na na na, we can beat you. These sort of things to settle. Um, so who better to have this to settle with than two guys from two ends of uh, town hamlet's that I've been there week in, week out for our ILFL. There for you guys on the weekends to make sure your football's running smooth. Uh, over to my right, um, naturally as I do, um, we've got young Shaquille here, our ILFL um, publicity officer and representative of Bromley. And over to our left here, we've, had a, we've got a man who's been Brick Lane, who's been Beaumont, who's been Aberfeldy. You name it, he's got his nose sniffed up in all of it. But at the end of the day, this is Rashid from ILFL. So this is ILFL Soccer Night, the final one for March, the final one for this season possibly, um, and a few things we want to discuss about in the vets. So lots to go through today. We're going to talk about the open age football first, um, then we will go on to the uh, vets in our second segment. And we've got a cup draw as well. We'll see where we can squeeze that in. Let's, let's be spontaneous and see how we get on with the show. Um, Rush, I, I probably want to shift over to you. Um, I'm going to bring up the results shortly, but um, I mean, we, we had, um, let's just recap on our champions to start with, because we've, we've had London Tigers, congratulations to them, they've, they've taken the Premiership, and, and a bit of a surprise to some of us, because we thought Stepney were going to do back-to-back. -back. Um, and then we had um, Crusaders take the first division, and St. Catherine's take the second. Um, I mean, you've been there week in, week out. I mean, in your opinion, just give us a rundown of how you feel these three teams deserved to I take the titles? The major credit has to go to Crusaders, uh, the new team to come in. I think there was few new teams in, the, in that division. Uh, before the season started, we looked at the obvious ones like sort of Robin Hood uh, and Ace being played in the summer would probably be one of the favourites, but Crusaders, they came with a motive, uh, had an agenda, and they make, meant business, and I think they surprised a lot of the teams. And I was actually watching their game yesterday, and they, they did look like champions, because I think once they played against Robin Hood yesterday, they, they got the early goals, uh, they were defensively very strong, and they seem to frustrate uh, Robin Hood Tigers, although I think their eye is obviously in two weeks' time, which is the League Cup Finals or two. For a, a new team to come in, win the championship, uh, be in a Cup Final, and potentially also in, a, in, a, in another Cup as well. So it goes, just goes to show sometimes, it's not about experience, it's about the determination and how organised teams are, and you know, the, the desire and the hunger they have. With St. Catharines, again, a established team. They've been in the Premiership a couple of years, seasons ago, it's good to see them there bouncing back, uh, rebuilding the team. Uh, and to be honest, they should be playing in Division 1 or Premiership, not in Division 2. So I think they've, uh, it's good, good to see that they sorted out their squad itself and the players, the members, and they bounce back. And uh, again, that was an interesting uh, Division 2 because Waltham Stall Red Star were, you know, in top of the league all the way through the season until they turn up on the show, not, unless we jinxed it. <laughs> Since then, they've uh, I've been unable to think, yeah, win a game. And Red Coat, again, you know, very, very surprised. <coughs> way they've handled and changed their team ethics and, and their recruitment structure and so there's been a lot of, uh, lot of new things for a lot of the new team which goes to show that teams are adapting with changes, teams are willing to uh, go outside uh, their local area, the convenience and to make sure that they you know, win the league or be competitive and again it's a credit to the league for getting teams from all parts of London and outside London as well. It's an interesting point you made about teams going outside, I'm going to come on to that afterwards because actually I was at the sidelines yesterday and someone said something very similar and uh, I think that's probably what, where we want to look at and how our leagues develop because now we're obviously talking about we've got a representative in the Champions Cup final so yeah. um, let me take you over to the screens actually because I think let, let, let's show you what the results were. Um, to be honest these res um, results, some of them are meaningless because they were just um, positions to sort out. But um, just hopefully they're going to come up for you now. And what I could probably read out to you um, was, as Rash mentioned, um, that, that game against um, Crusaders and Robin Hood Tigers, as Rash mentioned. Um, Robin Hood Tigers were early favourites with the way you were, they were in the summer. But it turned out that Crusaders beat them 3-0. And so Crusaders won that division. Lena. And so it was just a second place. There we go, on the screen for you there. Thank you very much. Um, so there you see that second result there, 3-0 Crusaders beating Robin Hood Tigers. And the big game there was Ace against Seoul and Ace actually scoring with about two or three minutes left to go. That was a blinding game, but Ace beating Soul Youth 2-1. So what does that mean on the table? Well, if you have a look there, 
that's pretty much the table rounded up. Crusaders just got that one game which was disrupted by weather, which they've got left to play. But it doesn't matter because, as you can see on that table, uh, Crusaders won the division. Here it is again for you. Crusaders won that. And ace that victory against Seoul. You've pretty much cemented their position. They are also uh, practically a promotion team as well. So congratulations to ace and congratulations to Crusaders. You two shall be part of the Premier League uh, next season. And then you can see their Seoul youth in third place. I mean, well done to Seoul coming into coming back to us after a few years but um, absolutely making their mark there um, and doing really well um, third place quite cemented and Robin Hood Tigers a uh, team that's probably disappointed quite a few of our pundits after the summer and the winter they had last year but um, a respectable fourth position there they'll be one of the teams um, and the forces for next year and we have Stepney B high, high promises at the beginning even even them having a victory against Robin Hood but it looks like that was just one of three uh, and they were in fifth position then we have the bottom three Burdett I have to actually say congratulations to you you finished sixth place having spent a long time in the season at the bottom so well done that was a very good recovery and poor Sire relegated from the Premiership last year and they look like they're a relegation team this year as well they're they're down there second from bottom and Bo that they 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 really uh, wrap up that pack in the first division because they finished bottom I'm going to take you over to the second division result there was only one game and that was R AMY versus Redcoat a quite a convincing um, result for Redcoat beating them 7-1 and how does that make the table look well that is the table wrapped up there for you the second division is there so congratulations to St Catharines which we did say quite a few weeks ago but quite somewhat of a margin considering they probably did what Man United did in 1996 lose the first game every single pandit ripped them to pieces but they've gone on to be the champions of the second division congratulations St Catharines and Redcoat that was a brilliant result for them because they've got uh, they finished up second and um, you know, quite convincingly in the end um, apologies for that little hashtag there um, they did score quite a few goals but our computer systems we seem to miss miss that Wolfenstone Red Star spent the entire season at the top nearly and um, then sort of boiled away um, after our TV, TV show it seems like, like Rasmussen AMY we are very pleased to have you with us as well a respectable fourth place finish there um, the Arsenal um, quite a solid team for us and you know a respectable mid-table finish and P PYO I'd like to still say congratulations because it was a new team coming in and they've done quite well um, to, you know to still get 18 points in the season is very good West End Reserve um, again it's a reserve team system maybe we might see the actual reserve team system coming in to our leagues shortly but they they finished there in seventh then we have uh, Hamlets in eighth who had a promising start and Fish Island well still you know they may have finished bottom but they did get three wins and usually in the second division we have teams that finish with no wins or just the one win so Fish Island you are still finished in a respectable note so I'd like to congratulate all of these teams that I've just mentioned in the first division and the second division you, know, you guys are the teams that make the league a very compact and a, um, you know a sizable chunk, chunky lead, something to uh, something to enjoy, and I'm, so, I'm I'm really pleased that this has been a good season, and we've we've had our fair share of wins and losses. Um, so those are the first two divisions. Um, we we can probably look at the Premier Division, which is more or less wrapped up. Just one game left between Bromley and Lotus FC, which we played this coming weekend. But there you can see London Tigers in the end winning it on goal difference and just by the mere three goals. So um, sorry for that little technical glitch but uh, that is um, that's pretty much our open age football um, Rash I, what I was going to come back to you and it's probably I, I want to roll back the years actually because when we're looking 2001 ILFL started off and we were looking at teams I mean they're still represent the team names are still represented by the area and their geographical location and back then the teams were in their geographic I mean you I mean even when you started off you were an original Bowman but now that dynamic's changed, hasn't it? It has changed, and I think that's, that's benefit to the league and the credit to the league for not just confining them to a certain sector or an area, but you know, going to a broader area, opening up to other areas, other teams. Uh, it's not restricted to any ethnicity, so it's good to see that it's a mixture. Whereas initially, when the, uh, the league was formed, there was, uh, I think, uh, eight or nine teams, and primarily within the East London area itself, within all Bangladeshi community. Now you can see that teams, they're all over the place, and we have a mixture of ethnicity, and I think it's good to see that. It's refreshing and it's a challenge for the teams playing against different areas. Uh, I like when we see Lotus, West End, Reach Out, these teams coming in and making the whole competition more tougher. And I think it, that's a credit to the league itself. I want to uh, speak about, I, I want to speak about as many teams as I can, but Reach Out is one I want to really mention, Rash, because um, 
I mean, they came in and they, they, did, they took the uh, league by storm nearly and Hawk and Eagle peeped them at the end, and, but they still won the Challenge Cup. Yeah. They've been a breath of fresh air, haven't they? They have, and I like their, their, their setup. I like their manager. I like the, the organisation itself uh, and the way they play as well. Uh, they're one of, the, one of the teams that's well organised. They're one of the teams that I always see an hour before kick-off or it changed. Uh, one of the teams I see, they stay back after the game and review the game itself, mm. regardless if it's raining or wind, except they sit back, review. Uh, I like the manager, the way he you know, uh, delegates responsibility and the way they play. It's one of, one of the best footballing teams out of the whole, whole of the league. So it's credit to Alephal for having them involved and hopefully you know, they'll be more successful in the coming years. There's one more team I want to talk about in the Premiership. I mean, we've spoken plenty about Stepney. Um, yeah. We know the seven-time title holder. This year didn't go so well, but we're going to talk about them a lot more when, they, when we talk, yeah. uh, look at the Champions Cup final. Lotus FC. New hey. team, summer league took by storm. Yeah. A respectable third place. Respectable finish. again. I don't think no one uh, expected them to finish that high. I think when you, a new team comes in, uh, they're, they're thinking maybe they'll need some time to adjust or uh, you know get to know the system itself. But obviously they were hungry. They showed that determined, and they've got experience. You have to realize some of the clubs, although maybe new new to us, but they've got history. They've been successful in other leagues and other areas, so they've got experience. They've got the know-how. It's just a matter of adapting to the league itself and against the team itself. But again, credit to them. They were, I think a fresh. Uh, Fresh breath here, and I mm. think they look good as well in terms of playing on a regular basis. Shaquille, Bromley. <coughs> um, Bromley was always a name that whenever teams are drawn in the cup against them or whenever you had your fixture against them in the Premier League, it was a team to fear. They, they're like the Liverpool of ILFL, aren't they? I mean, haven't got trophies under their belts, so many, but they're a team to worry about. But this season, they finished third from bottom. Um, you know, just about got five wins out of the 15 games they played. They've got to well, one more game against Lotus. Um, but has it gone wrong for Bromley or uh, is it a transition period of rebuilding? Well, it's been a struggle season, um, no doubt about it. But I think it's a transition, um, trying to get all the youth, youth players involved, trying to get more experience as we possibly can. Obviously, last year there was a junior team. There's not a junior team this year. So there has been a lot of um, different players in, in the team, a lot of youth guys. Um, trying to get youngsters more involved rather than the oldies being in the team. So it's sort of a transition time. Um, but s sooner or later, the next year, they'll, they'll battle really hard and yeah. probably go for the title. So they but are bringing in new blood. Yeah, I mean, there's new vision to the, to the team now. They want to get more, more, more players, more youth rather than more experience now. Mm. I think so. So I think the other factor is what you touched on before. The fact that there are a lot of teams from uh, outside our comfort zone, the Islam itself, and they seem to be more competitive and more difficult to beat. I think the, the established long-term teams like so Bromley, likes of Stepney, likes of Bowman are realising the competition and that they need to step up. Yeah. I think that's another factor. <coughs> was before we used to play each other, mm -hmm. uh, it was more of a rivalry every week, and we knew each other. It was it was it was a bit obvious the, how the game was going to plan out. And now that you're playing new teams from different areas, it's different different, it's and a, I think It's a different ball game now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been up. So I think the game. established teams are realising we need to step up here. We need to... Because we realised in the Interleague Champions Cup, that's when you get to see the other champions, mm. what level they're in. And we, obviously we've got one team this year, but we're failing in that area. I think so now our established team, local team, need to step up and get mm. more recruitment and, and compete with the best out there. Let me just quickly bring up on, onto the screen the remaining... Um, few games that we've got of open age Sunday uh, football. So um, hopefully if it comes up on the screen for you now, there we go. Um, one fixture, as we've just been mentioning several times, um, this coming Sunday we're going to see Bromley take on Lotus FC um, as the final game of the Premiership. Um, call it an exhibition game or, or a display game. Um, and then we have the ILFL uh, Challenge Cup quarter-final uh, between St. Catharines and Crusaders. That will also be taking place that Sunday. So that is pretty much it. We've still got the Challenge Cup to come, as I mentioned. That's, that's probably the only remaining cup. Our Unity Cup is coming up. So I'm going to go for a quick break. Um, don't go away. We'll come back in the second segment, a bit more about the Open Age football, and then also about the Vets. So see you in a few moments. <laughs> 